pray together and ask the Lord to bless his word this evening. Father, we thank you once again for your presence, and we ask your Lord Jesus that you would take control of your word this evening. We thank you for the power and the life that is within it. May we receive it gladly and meditate upon it. And Lord Jesus, let it be a part of who we are each and every day. We have much to pray about, Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you would hear our cry. And tonight, as we look to the word, let us pray that it would be, dear Lord, a strength to us. And so, dear Jesus, we thank you and we trust that you have heard our prayers and that answers are there. We thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for all that you have done and all that you are going to do. In thy mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just before, actually, we get into the word, uh, two other just general announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, you, we've been talking about the fact that Glenda is starting to shop for Christmas things already. Actually, this weekend was her first weekend to do that. Uh, she wrote on Facebook, she only has three free weekends between now and Christmas. Um, she travels into a smaller or another community to do that shopping, probably a bigger community. Um, and so she started to do that already um, and will be taking up an offering coming up. That will be in the bulletin. Uh, and please remember to uh, please give and do your part for that work. Uh, also praying for Glenda. Um, she seems to me that of late she's dealing with a lot of death. Uh, and uh, again, she posted that uh, I think just today, this morning, within the last, when she posted it, it was within a few hours, uh, two more brothers in the Lord have, been, have gone home to be with the Lord. One in uh, Texas, in the church that she's at there, and another one in one of the uh, mountain communities. So uh, she's dealing with a lot of loss, um, and so uh, continue to pray for her to be encouraged. Um, as she uh, has to you know, work through all of those different emotions all of the time. Our other announcement, or the other thing, just keep in mind, we have a business meeting that's coming up, uh, and so you'll see that as well. An opportunity for you to please come out, uh, hear how things are going, and also if there are some areas that you think, you know, we could use a little sprucing up here and there, um, please, you can make those things known. Uh, we don't always see everything. Uh, and so it's good to share and be a part of that as well. This evening I want to take a look at one particular word. And um, it, it struck me as an interesting one um, because it is a word that can mean something in a singular or it can mean something in plural. Um, and as I was uh, reading and I came across this, it, I was interested in the fact that there was not an S uh, at the end of this word. And it made me realize how great God is. And how he's interested and concerned, not only when we come to him with these massive, complicated problems, um, but also when we come to him with smaller difficulties. Well, I guess what we might call everyday concerns. Um, and as I say that, I think we all have to recognize that no matter what I define as being a massive problem, it's all small in God's eyes. You see, the word we're going to take a look at is burden. And a burden, by definition, is a load, and I'm going to define that in a minute, uh, but it's typically something that is a heavy load. Right? We usually think about a burden as being something that is heavy or a heavy load. Um, a load is specifically something that is heavy or bulky, but more than that, it's something that's being carried. So a burden, then, is something, generally speaking, that is heavy, something that is bulky, all right, so can be awkward, I suppose, in that sense, in the natural sense. But the important piece is that we're, somebody's carrying it. It's being carried. Um, and because it's being carried, it's generating some form of pressure. There's a weight attached to it. Um, and that weight, pushing down, creates pressure. Now, burdens, heavy loads, 
come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, they can be financial burdens. They can be emotional or social kind of burdens. They can be physical burdens. They come, as I said, all different shapes, all different sizes. And one of the th other things, as I was thinking about the term, before we start looking at some scripture, is that we have to be very careful not to judge when somebody seems to be under a burden. And the reason I say that, and linking it back to what I said a moment ago about for God, everything is small. No matter how big of a problem, no matter, no matter how big of a burden you think you are carrying, for God, it's tiny. And you see, burdens being relative, it's not really something where we can look at a brother or look at a sister and judge them because they seem to be having some kind of difficulty carrying or dealing with a specific problem. There's so much that we don't see. Remember that. If I give you a personal example, um, when my back is completely out, which praise the Lord, it hasn't been now for quite some time, but when it goes completely out, while I might look physically fit, quote unquote, and I've had people say, oh, you can carry that. You look like you're a fit fella. Thank you very much. But when my back is out, I can't even lift my foot off the ground. If I'm sitting and it's really out, it takes minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes to get myself back into a standing position. Um, so we can look a certain way on the outside is what I'm trying to get at here. But there can be all kinds of things that people are carrying, dealing with, um, that they feel as a pressure that we don't fully understand. So the big thing that we can do is pray. That's most, most important. And of course, we can try and help that brother or sister to do the proper thing with the burden. I've used examples like this before. One book to somebody who's really small, a small, small child, could be seen as a burden. I wouldn't consider this a burden. Okay. Now, I've also used this example before, that in, in, in this particular fashion, this isn't difficult whatsoever. But you see, something that is small, that you don't consider a burden today, if I have to carry this for days on end, or maybe weeks on end, without putting it down, <coughs> suddenly something that was easy to handle at the beginning, and I wouldn't have considered it a burden, suddenly after a week or two or a month, or six months, or a year of carrying nothing bigger than what I started out with, suddenly this becomes a burden. Okay? And so there's much to be learned from the scripture, and we know the key verses here, but I wanted to make sure we understood what a burden is. One thing, or it can be a combination of things. I had the idea in my mind that you could have a knapsack and you could fill it up with a whole bunch of different things, but we would still call that a burden, even though it's made up of many individual pieces. I like the idea, personally, of knowing that a burden can be many different things, because when Scripture tells us to take our burdens to the Lord, or our burden to the Lord, it means I don't have to wait and go one at a time, Lord, take care of this problem, and then wait for a while as if God gets tired, because he doesn't, and then come to him with the next problem, and then come with him to him with the next one or the next one. I can take the entire load. 
to God all at once. See, as God's people, we really have no excuse for being bound. Did you hear me? There's no reason for us to stay under a heavy burden. None whatsoever. Except for the fact that sometimes we're too proud or ignorant. And yes, I'll even include myself in that statement. Sometimes I'm too ignorant to recognize and realize that God is there to set the captive free. Because you see, a burden in, in reality, something that creates that weight and that pressure, creates a captive. The person who is carrying this burden around is, in fact, captive to what they are carrying with them. So the next time we sing, Jesus set me free, why should I be bound? I want you to think not only of, you know, something that, like the image of somebody who's all tied up, but I also want you to think about the image of perhaps yourself or myself when we are carrying all of these problems and concerns and worries. Those things bind us as well. And those things we can also be set free from. Luke chapter 1. And I always like to uh, make sure I include the obvious. And the reason I give you these verses, and the reason I always start with them myself, is because you know, and I've said it many a time, it's important for us to make sure we hold on to the foundations. Okay? The very, very basic, fundamental truths of Scripture, because those are the things upon which all Scripture is built upon. And that's what my faith is standing on. That's the rock. And from that spot, all other problems disappear. All the burdens are lifted because of some very, very basic truths that we have to hold on to, that the enemy would like us to forget about. And in the time of great distress, or if you're struggling under a great burden, sometimes we may actually even forget about these things. Because we're so focused on the burden. Imagine yourself on a hike. Beautiful surroundings. Wonderful sunshine. The sounds of birds. The trees. The grass. You're hiking somewhere in a wilderness. And it's absolutely gorgeous. But you're carrying 300 pounds on your back. It won't be very long when all you will be focusing on is what you're carrying. Because it hurts. And every step is a struggle. You're not going to see the trees. You're not going to see the beauty. You're not going to see the wonderful things that God has created. You're just going to be focused on this heavy, heavy weight that you're carrying. And that's exactly what Satan wants to do. He doesn't want you to come into church to worship and to praise God. He doesn't want you to focus on the scripture that talks about being set free. He wants everybody to be focused on that problem, that burden, that weight. And that robs you and it robs me of what God wants us to really have. So basic things are really, really important. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Very short, but so critical. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Now just stop and think for a minute. How important that verse is. Like meditate on that, just even for a second. Right? If that in fact is true, which we believe it is, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Wait a minute. If that's the case, and it is, and we can accept that by faith, and grab a hold of that promise and that truth, is there any burden, then, that God could not remove? 
Is there any problem that God cannot solve? Is there any financial problem, health problem, social problem, emotional problem? You name it, problem. I don't care what you say. It doesn't matter. We could brainstorm and come up with the most catastrophic situation. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. That verse just wipes it all away. If we'll claim it, if we live it, and you see, if you don't grab a hold of that, if you don't believe that, can you see how then, how difficult it becomes to grab a hold of some of the other promises? How difficult then it becomes to believe that somebody can be delivered? How difficult it then might become even to say, well, how can God save that person? Look how terrible they are. Wait a minute. What does Scripture say? So, a simple verse, something I'm sure if I said to you, have you heard about the fact that with God, nothing shall be impossible? Everybody here is going to say, yes, I knew that. But we have to live it. We have to act upon that. I have to get up in the morning, you have to get up in the morning, and we have to jump out of bed now. Some of us, we're not jumping as fast as maybe we used to jump. But you, know, you get the idea. We have to get out of bed with God shining upon us, recognizing here's another day where God can demonstrate and show us that nothing is impossible with God. Imagine. Just, you know, if I stop the message there, that's plenty. Because... If we apply that to everything, because it says nothing shall be impossible, so that means everything is possible. Wow, that sure lifts my burdens. That should take away my worry, my care, my fretting, because now God is going to take care of all of those things. Well, as long as we do something as well. When I spoke about a burden and give you that definition, you'll recall that I said the important thing is that it's being carried. Okay? Now what we want to just take a look at for a moment is where are you carrying it to? The idea of carrying something perpetually, remember my book here? If I said to you, I'm going to carry this around with me for a year, and I'm never going to put it down. Okay. If you're being polite, you won't say this, but if you're not being polite, you might say, you're crazy. Why would you do something so stupid? That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And you're right. It makes no sense whatsoever. But see, we have to apply that to all the other burdens you might be carrying or tempted to carry around. Does it make any sense to carry anything around with you forever? Even Christ dwells within. And in that sense, I don't even think about carrying him. He might be carrying me around for sure, forever if I let him. But you see, that's not a burden because Christ is within. He's giving me strength. He's not a weight upon my shoulders. What I'm trying to say is it makes no sense to carry something, anything around forever. Generally speaking, when we pick something up, we're picking it up to carry it and put it down somewhere Right? That's really what we're doing. And so, when we take a look at where are you carrying your burdens to, we have to be aware again of a trick of the enemy. Because one of the things that happens is that even though we, as God's people, know that we should carry our burden to the Lord, right? He's the one that we want to carry that burden to. Yet, 
Sometimes it takes us a long time before we finally recognize that that should be the destination for our burdens. See, a lot of people will try a lot of things before they finally recognize that God is the answer. All you have to do is look at the world around us, right? They'll try this thing, that thing, let's get together and think about it. This group of people, well, maybe that's the wrong group of people to think about it. Let's get another group of people to think about it. Let's try it a different way, a different way, a different way. But until the world recognizes that burdens have to go to God, that God is the only one who can take that burden and make it disappear. I said to somebody today, remember, God is the only one that can change a person. So there's no point in arguing. There's no part, point in, really, there's actually almost no point in getting upset. Because we present the word of the Lord, we can have a conversation about what the Bible says. We can look at original text. We can look at context. All of those different things. We can take a look at a whole bunch of different verses. But in the end, I have to accept what God says. And so does the other person. So, you see, God is always the answer. Always. And the Bible tells us that. You know, in Psalm, Psalm, uh, no, sorry, Jeremiah. Pardon me, I jumped down the wrong spot. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 5, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Jeremiah 17 and 5, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Cursed, that's a very strong word. But it makes it very clear there, you see. If you're trusting somebody else to solve your problem, to lift your burden, to make that burden go away, you have misplaced your trust. Because the moment we trust in someone other than God, we are, as it says there, departing from the Lord. Okay? God has to be the number one solution that all of us go to all of the time. And we need to practice that. And more than that, I think we have to defend that. All right? To make sure that we are always turning to the Lord. A while back, I used some verses in Matthew um, for a different message. Matthew chapter 17. And one of the verses kind of came back to my memory when I was thinking about where do we take our burdens? And what happens if we go to the wrong spot? And in Matthew 17, verse 19, this is after the disciples could not rebuke the enemy, right, and set the uh, boy free that was a lunatic and sore vexed, right? Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, and he because of your unbelief, right? And then he goes on a little bit further, but because of our unbelief in what? Because of our unbelief in the power of God. See, if we believe that there is nothing impossible to the Lord and put that into practice, then God will move and solve all of our problems. But because the disciples were not believing the way they should, all right, and weren't prepared they were they should have been, to me that means they put their trust in the arm of flesh. Let's see what we can do. Well, we always make a mess. God does not. Okay? So putting our trust in man or flesh always results in a problem. But when we go to the Lord, in Matthew 11 and verse 28, Jesus himself says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest 
unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Remember when we started, I told you that in the world sense, we usually speak of a burden and then we are assuming something heavy. But here Jesus is saying that for a Christian, the burden, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So, yes, there's something that as Christians we are carrying, but it's not difficult to carry. Okay? And that, of course, we recognize is because we're not carrying it alone. Have you ever noticed that? If you try and move something really, really big by yourself, it can be a struggle. If there's one other person that helps you, suddenly it gets a little easier. If you're coordinated enough and you've got a few people helping and you don't trip all over each other, guess what? It gets even lighter. So that suddenly it doesn't feel that heavy at all, even though it's the very same burden that was there before. Jesus carries that burden to make it light for us. Okay? If we do what Jesus tells us to do. Come unto me. Once again, you see, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the solution. So we come to Jesus, and perhaps you've done this, you take your burden to the Lord, you're praying, you've come, so to speak, to a spiritual altar, and you know as well as I do, the next big challenge is leaving the burden there, right? Very often we can take it to the Lord and we pray, and we can actually even feel a lifting when the Spirit of the Lord starts to lift and takes that burden off of our shoulders. But the problem is, many times, people pick it up again. <clears throat> and it all starts with these little words of doubt. But, if, those are the really big ones that jump into my mind, right? Those little words tend to be like chains that bind us to that burden. So that the moment we stop praying and we say, Amen, and we turn around if we're praying at an altar, or you get back up from where you were kneeling. What Satan wants to do is immediately put this little seed of doubt back in your mind. And what that causes people to do is often to pick up the burden again. Well, it's not really gone, the devil says. Well, it's not really solved, that problem. You just watch and see. It's still going to be right there. And the minute that devil, that demon, speaks in your heart and mind and mine, we're picking the whole thing back up again. There's a challenge here, because if you carry something around with you long enough, go back to my book, it sort of becomes a part of you. If I were to carry this book around with me for a month or two. Every time you see me, I have this book with me. Every time. It starts to become associated with me. Oh yeah, Pastor Roger, he's the guy carrying that book. It becomes part of who I am. Even though that's silly. But you see, people and their burdens, Satan tries to convince people that they almost can't put it down because it's part of who they are. What would I talk about if I didn't have that problem? Some people might say. Everybody knows I have this issue. It's who I am. Or, you know, sometimes Pastor John will sort of say, you know, well, you know, it's something from my mom or something from my dad. You know, it's, it's just the thing that we do in this family. 
that's associating yourself with a burden. And so Satan sort of says to people, you can't get rid of that. It's who you are, even though it's a bad thing. And so the challenge, of course, that we have, and all of us have to deal with this, is take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Okay? See, to be set free means it's no longer a part of me. Okay? It's not associated with me anymore. You know, I carry it around for a few months, and then suddenly I don't have it anymore. You'll be surprised. You'll notice. But you see, that's a good thing. Because then we can testify. Yes, I used to be bound by that. Yes, I was always worried. I was always anxious. I had to take those drugs. I had to do this thing, that thing, or whatever it happens to be. But you know what? Jesus set me free. So I don't want you to think about me like that worry work person. Or that always complaining about a sore this or a sore that kind of a person. Because you know what? Jesus took that burden away. And scripture tells us that. You see, if I go to Psalm, Psalm 55 and verse 22. 55 and 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Okay? Now, it doesn't say, cast your burden on the Lord and leave it there. But the idea of throwing something at someone else is to get rid of it, okay? If I cast my waste into a garbage can, it means I'm throwing it there, I'm letting go of it, it's going to disappear, okay? You don't put your garbage in the garbage can and then later go back and pick it up again and put it back on your plate, do you? You don't take it and put it back in your house, do you? No. We cast our garbage away, our burdens away, and that means that we are letting go of these things, okay? And Jesus is the one who changes us. And John chapter 1 and verse 29 says this. John chapter 1, verse 21, 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. See, sin is a burden. That's what I want you to pick up here. Okay, Sin is a burden. Sin is oppressive. Sin becomes a heavy weight. And it has a tendency to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But interestingly enough, John, early in Jesus' ministry, right, this is chapter 1 of John, already sees, okay, Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. See, that's what Jesus wants to do to all of our burdens. Take them away. He washes them away. Right? And then John, back at, go to chapter 19, so at the end, towards the end here, where we're looking at the crucifixion, it says in John 19 and verse 17, And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. What did Jesus do? He bears the cross. Jesus carries the burden. We know that Jesus died not just as a natural person whose natural body passed away, but more important, Jesus died bearing all of our sins. All of those 
burdens. I can't imagine how heavy that was. Nobody could do it except for Jesus. No one. But the cross is symbolic of the burden then that Jesus carried, right? That he took to the hill upon which he died. And so sin is this great burden that Jesus takes away. And the last verse is in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And to me, this section of scripture here kind of wraps this whole idea up when it says, um, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. We have to stop there just for a second. All things are passed away. They're not in your pocket. They're not on your back. They're not hiding somewhere in a closet. They're gone. See, the old things are burdens. Anything of the world, any of those things, if there's anything that cleaves to our flesh, Right? If there's anything that makes the white garment stained again, it's the things of the world. It's the bill that the male person brings and puts in your door slot or wherever. Right? It's the unexpected repair. It's the phone call you get from the doctor. It's something that a child tells you or a spouse tells you. Whatever. It's something you see on the news. These are the stains. They always come from the world. They don't come from God. So God says, when you come to Him, the first thing that He does is He makes us a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become. Jesus set me free. Why? It's a great word to stop on. Why should I be bound? I have to remember that one. You know, on a tough morning or whatever it happens to be, I think I'll look in the mirror the next time and I'll have to remind myself. Jesus, say it to yourself in the, into a mirror. Jesus set me free. Why should I be bound? And you cannot, in truth, come up with a good response as to why you should remain bound. Because it's certainly never because God can't take care of the problem. Burdens are lifted, the songwriter said, at Calvary. Right? At the cross. At the cross. Jesus paid the price for all of us. And he took the greatest burden, sin. Lifted it off of those that are willing to let go. Willingness to let go, right? And let God have his way. See, people have a tendency to take things and attach them to themselves. I'm thinking right now about, you know, those that are... Uh, serving Satan, demonic, and they want to cover themselves in terrible tattoos and and make themselves ugly, you know. And and now you know they get implants. I don't know if you've seen these people, right? They get implanted horns. I don't know if you've seen that. They have implants they put in here, so they have two little horns here, you know, and then all the piercings and all the other disfiguration kind of things that they do. Because they want to associate so closely with that demonic thing. Well, as God's people, Jesus sets us free from that. Those things are wiped away. Behold, all things become new. Take your burden, singular or many, to the Lord and leave it them. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, that you are here to take care of every situation. It seems 
impossible that it could be so simple. It seems improbable that there's nothing that is impossible to you. There's nothing you cannot do. If only, dear Lord Jesus, I didn't doubt or question that. And so, Lord, I need to come and I need to ask for your help. Help my unbelief. Give me that little bit of faith as a grain the size of a mustard seed. That's all that Jesus said is required. We don't have to have a bountiful supply. We don't have to have more than, you know, we don't have to be completely filled up. We just need this little bit. And so it speaks poorly of me. I don't know about my brother or my sister, but I, it speaks poorly of me, and I have to ask your forgiveness, Lord, when I have doubts or fears or worries or stress. All of these things that start to become my focus so that I can't see all the other wonderful things that you are doing. So Jesus, tonight, I thank you for the scriptures that speak of our burden. I thank you, Lord, that you promise that when we come unto you as weary and heavy laden people, that means we're carrying great, great burdens, that you promise, that you say that you will give us rest. How, is, how, is that, how does that happen? I believe it happens, Lord, because you lift the burdens away. You wash us, you cleanse us, you teach us, you strengthen us, you encourage us, you correct us. You put us on a path of success based on your word, based on you and following you and letting you into our lives. So thank you, Lord, for lifting my burdens. And help me, dear Lord Jesus, to remember that when the enemy comes along and tries to put another one on my back, that, Father, not only will I say, get thee behind me, Satan, but I will also come directly to you, not to the arm of flesh, but directly to you, and ask you, dear Lord Jesus, to lift this burden, cleanse me, wash me, protect me, so that such a thing will not happen again. I thank you and I praise you, Lord, Father, that we can remember prayer requests, that we can bring, your Lord Jesus, your missionaries before you. We can bring world situations before you. We can bring po politics and the world, Canadian situations before you, this election before you. All these things, these are no surprise to God. These are no surprise to you. You understand better than I do, better than any analytic sort of analysis or surveys or any of these numbers that people pump out. Lord, you know what, you know why, you know how, and you know when. And Father, help me, dear Lord Jesus, to be obedient to you. As we pray now, Lord God, encourage every heart, lift us up. Let us bring those burdens to you right now, this evening. It doesn't have to be a special place, a special time, but Lord God, you are always there. You are never too tired. You're never carrying too much that you can't take another burden off of the shoulders of one of your children. Thank you, Lord, for saving us and for making us whole. I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.